St. Alphonsus de Liguri was born in Naples in Italy in 1696. His parents were Giuseppe, who was a naval commander, and his mother was Anna. St. Alphonsus had always considered or discerned a vocation to the priesthood, even as he continued his law career. But at the age of 26, something happened. He was defending a client and he had built up his case and he believed that he would win the case because all his documentation was in order. But what he did not know was the opponents had bribed the judge. He lost the case, the first case he ever lost, and he was so irate and disappointed. And he let out a huge cry. World, I know you now. Courts, you will see me no more. And he sunk into a tremendous depression. He went to a church, the Church of Our Lady of Ransom, and he took out his nobleman's sword and laid it at the feet of the statue of Our Lady of Ransom. And then that moment, he made a firm decision to become a priest. As a young priest, Alphonsus was full of energy and zeal. One of the projects he dedicated himself to was the evening chapels. For a group of people who are known in Italian as the Lazzaroni, they were the simple people of the street. And he gathered them together, taught them catechism, led them in praying the rosary and singing hymns. But after a few years, Alphonsus was on the verge of burnout. Some of his friends recommended that he take a holiday in a mountain village called Scala. This was to prove very fortuitous because in Scala, he met the goat herds who were baptized but uncatechized. They had been abandoned by the church. And this became Alphonsus' inspiration to found the Redemptorist congregation. So many only had bad news in their lives as they suffered in poverty or were caught in situations that they could not free themselves from. Using simple language and appealing to the affect, the Redemptorists proclaim a message of God's love and mercy and redemption. Father Patrick Lynch was the first Redemptorist to set foot in these parts. An Australian missionary in the Philippines, he came to preach missions and conduct retreats in Malacca in 1921. He was followed by a number of other Redemptorists. Impressed by their work, Bishop Adrian de Valls, MEP, the Bishop of Malacca, which at that time included Singapore, wrote to the Redemptorist Provincial of Australia, Father William Byrne, in October 1934, inviting the Redemptorists to establish a foundation in the diocese. He wrote, I greatly wish to have your fathers here to help us in the work of salvation and sanctification of many souls. The community was established in the latter half of 1935 the original community consisted of four priests and two brothers. Father Aloysius Brennan was the superior. Fathers James Green, John Moran, and Thomas Bortisel, along with Brother Dennis and Brother Felix. Father Brennan was the oldest of the group, aged just 35. The first community was established at a rented property on 339 Thompson Road, the present site of the Thompson Medical Centre. Between 1935 and 1941, these pioneer redemptorists dedicated themselves to learning Chinese dialects, Malay and Tamil, and to preaching missions not only locally, but in Malaya, Burma, Sri Lanka and India. On 15th February 1942, the inevitable happened. Singapore fell to the Japanese and the occupation began. The community found hope in the words that Father Byrne had written to them at the time of the foundation. The foundation is in its infancy and none of us can foretell its future. But if we are earnest in prayer and zealous in our work, the future will undoubtedly be a glorious one. If we do our part in prayer and in work and in bearing patiently the many trials and hardships inseparable from this particular foundation, God will assuredly bless us abundantly. The war eventually came to an end and the Japanese surrendered on 12th September 1945. 
the incarcerated were released and the Redemptorists returned to their community to begin rebuilding their mission. After the war, the community moved into their second residence at 418 Thompson Road and finally in July 1948, they were able to secure the purchase of 300 Thompson Road, which would be the permanent home of the Redemptorists till today. In January 1949, the Redemptorists began the Perpetual Novena to our Mother of Perpetual Help in the small community chapel. As crowds multiplied, the original church was hastily constructed and opened in 1950, by which time 10 Novenas were celebrated every Saturday with more than 15,000 people attending. The first annual procession was held to coincide with the Feast of Our Mother of Perpetual Help on 21st June 1953. This was moved the following year to the first Sunday of September and remains the highlight of the year for the devotees. The early Redemptorists faced many obstacles, not least the war and the Japanese occupation, together with the usual challenges of setting up a new missionary foundation. Indeed, we can be proud of these zealous group of pioneers who built the foundation of the Redemptorist mission here in Singapore. Father James Doherty, who was rector of Novena Church from 1967 to 1969, once said, vocations or vanish. The late 1950s already saw the emergence of the first local vocations. Father Paul Pang and Brother Victor Dore were the first Singaporeans to enter the congregation. The recruitment of Redemptorists and their formation for the missionary life remains a priority and a challenge for the community. Father Doherty was right, vocations or vanish. Do pray for us and for our seminarians and for the many young men who are discerning what God may be wanting them to do in their life. While itinerant missions were not the brainchild of St. Alphonsus himself, this was the method of mission that the early congregation was totally committed to. The first community in Singapore, led by Father Brennan, were zealous missionaries who conducted parish missions not only in Singapore and Malaysia, but in Burma, Sri Lanka and India. Since the establishment of Novena Church, parish missions have continued in Singapore. Father PJ O'Neill and Father Simon Pereira deserve credit for setting the foundations of the school missions which continue until today. School missions were the brainchild of Father PJ in the late 1960s. He devised the idea of conducting a program for students in school during the week. One of these students who attended the mission at St. Joseph's Institution was a certain Simon Pereira, who would later become Father PJ's protege and build on the foundations that last till today. From the beginning, Redemptorists were involved in ministering to the most abandoned people in society. One of the most inspiring stories must be the prison ministry that was first established by Father Brian Doro. Together with Good Shepherd, Sister Gerard Fernandez, he ministered to prisoners for decades, developing an immense reputation for catechizing and baptizing the most hardened criminals, hearing the last confessions and ministering the last rites to inmates on death row and for being with them as they were executed. The Redemptorists were also behind the founding of the Family Life Society. Father Edmund Dunn's interest and concerns grew as he became more involved in marriage preparation, ministry to couples through the marriage encounter, and especially as a defender of the bond in the marriage tribunal. A doctor of canon law with the pastoral heart of a redemptorist, he responded to Archbishop Gregory Young's invitation to make the apostolate to the family a priority in the archdiocese. At first, catechism was often done on a one-to-one -one basis or in small groups following a program of several weeks duration devised by the individual priest. Many Singaporeans were prepared for baptism following private instruction given by Father Tom Creed or Father John Crow or Father Gregory Dobson or others. The Second Vatican Council, which ended in 1965, reintroduced the rite of Christian initiation of adults, a method of preparation for baptism that was used in the early church. 
Father Bernard Teo, with support from Archbishop Gregory Yong, is credited with introducing the RCIA to Singapore. This then spread to parishes and is today a thriving ministry, both in Novena Church and every parish. These are only some of the ministries that the Redemptorists pioneered in Singapore. We must acknowledge that the Novena Church has been a tremendous blessing from God, which has given us a foundation on which to build on. We must also thank Mary, our Blessed Mother, for her constant prayers and intercession. May she continue to lead more people to the plentiful redemption of Christ. Plans to rebuild the new church was first mooted in 2004. With the increase of devotees for the Novena devotion, on Saturdays, the Redemptress community started the discussion to expand the old church built in 1950. The discussion was then moved to building a new church either by demolishing the old church or building a new church next to the old. The latter direction was in favour with most of the community members. The architect designed the first plans and it was revised a few times before the final design was adopted. Fundraising began in earnest. Quite a number of items and events were organised to raise the amount for the building of the new church. Items like books on the history of the Redemptress, umbrellas, calendars, food items, walkathon, golf tournament, gala dinners, and many more. The devotees were more than generous to contribute to this important cost. From September 2014, the church and adjacent buildings were closed. Masses were then started at St. Joseph Junior School and Saturday devotions were held at the Church of the Risen Christ. We are very grateful to the principal of St. Joseph Junior and the parish priest of the Risen Christ. For three years, the services went on smoothly. The building of the new church and pastoral centre went ahead on full steam from November 2014. The design of a new Gothic style was conceived. It does not overshadow the old church, but instead complements it. One of the most prominent features of the new church are the set of 24 panels of stained glass. Two Italian artisans set up their workshop here and work on the pieces for four years. The new church was completed in September 2017. In 2011, we set up an archival repository for the Redemptorist Congregation of Singapore and Malaysia. The collection consists of documents, photos, books and items worthy of heritage.